Now that the launch lineup has been set and the release calendar has been put on paper, what are our top five most wanted Switch games that haven't been shown yet? Here at Switch Force, we have the list for you. Myself, Jake, and Gabe are going to run it down and we'll kick things off right away with number five, Luigi's Mansion 2. I think you should explain why you think Luigi's Mansion 2 would be great because you kind of just told us and do it again. Yeah, so Luigi's Mansion was a, a very fun GameCube launch title and Dark Moon on 3DS was actually a big seller. It sold over 5 million copies, which is quite a bit, um, and was a good game. Now, I think this will be excellent on the Switch uh, because uh, the Joy-Con have a surprising amount of tech in them, uh, whether it is sort of their uh, haptic rumble or it is their gyro ability. I think that's a great combination for the light and vacuum uh, in Luigi's Mansion and could create a really cool experience uh, with the Joy-Con detached and you can replicate that easily with analog stick movements when you have it put back uh, on the tablet plus I think it would be really nice to see a non Mario or Link character get the spotlight again and get like a full tentpole game treatment um, and I think with the visual uh, panache of the switch and the crispiness of that screen uh, especially with the darker atmosphere and the darker mood of, of Luigi's Mansion, especially Dark Moon, uh, I think it would be a nice twist on the typical Mushroom Kingdom uh, spunk, and again, with those Joy-Con, would create a really interesting uh, uh, usage for their features. Plus, I think Luigi's Mansion 2 is where you can introduce multiplayer, and whether it's like a, a two-player ghost hunt or an uh, expansion of the uh, ghost minigame from Nintendo Land, I think you could do some really cool things uh, with two-player Mario vs. Luigi, uh, Luigi's Mansion. Jake, how do you feel about Luigi's Mansion? Because I don't like it as much as everybody else does for some reason. It oh, just I never, love it. It never clicked for me. It was one of the first games like I beat all the way through by myself. Um, and I think it'd be great, um, you know, after having Mario come out and have him have his spotlight game, like Zach was saying, and then have, you know, a Luigi game that's focused on Luigi with sort of a different mood and tone, um, a little bit darker, a little bit more you know, mature, it's still kid friendly, obviously, but just like a different, totally different um, theme um, would be really interesting to see on the Switch. Indeed. Moving right along to number four, this is one that I think everyone thought we were going to see uh, at the presentation uh, the Ubisoft game. Now, it's been rumored by Emily Rogers and Laura K. Dell to be a Rayman, a Raving Rabbids, Mushroom Kingdom crossover RPG. Uh, will that be what it is at E3, or will they have something new? I, I specifically also put this on the list because Zombie U was my favorite. Uh, Wii U game for quite a long time, and I think Ubisoft seems to gel with Nintendo pretty well, uh, especially when they develop exclusives for their system. So whether it is that that Rayman Rabbids RPG crossover or something new entirely, um, I think that is going to be one of the best third-party efforts, um, and I have to imagine it's coming this year. I don't think Ubisoft is going to sit on Just Dance 2017 uh, on March 3rd for the rest of the year, so most likely we get this reveal uh, in the coming months or at E3, and then hopefully get to play it uh, before the calendar runs out. I really hope it is the the, the RPG, like I, I, instead of like something akin to Zombie U. Like I I want them to use the Nintendo properties, and uh, you know a Mario Rabbids RPG sounds like a fun idea to me. So that's what I hope it is, and I also hope you're right about it being this year because you know we know more or less what Nintendo has coming throughout the year, and it's not a lot of stuff. So you would assume that things are gonna pop up. You would assume that their E3 presentation is going to have things that are going to release during holiday because they're not going to go holiday with just Mario, right? I mean, no, for sure not. I mean, if you look at the history, uh, whether it's 3DS, Wii, Wii U, they always have a couple of tentpole titles uh, for the winter holiday season. So I'm sure they just want to save some stuff for E3 so that they didn't blow their load uh, here in January and then come June have nothing exciting to show. So, you know, Reggie made a comment that, you know, Metroid basically, you know, he... he you know, insinuated that Metroid is well in the works, um, and so, you know, I'm sure there'll be more for the holiday, and I, I wouldn't mind seeing another mature game. I think the cool aspect of Zombie U was it offered a very, you know, different kind of game that you'd expect from a Nintendo platform, and, you know, at that point was a hopeful sign for third-party development. We know where that went with Wii U, uh, but it would be good to get some mature-rated stuff in there uh, for Switch if that thing is going to have a more well-rounded third-party base. So that takes us to number three, um, and number three is one that I put here because of 
Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, number three is Super Smash Bros. for Switch, um, and the reason I put it there, even though it's looking like it'll be a port, um, is because Mario Kart 8 works so well in that tabletop mode. Playing locally with, with two people uh, was so fun, and I think that Smash Brothers will have the same effect. Being able to duke it out wherever you are, whenever you want, is going to be a really cool effect. And hopefully, they will expand upon it, uh, and, and there was some, some, some thought that maybe the reason they held off is because it's a bigger deal than people expect. So maybe there are a lot more characters, maybe it is more of a, an overhaul than we're expecting. Uh, nonetheless, I think it's a, a great usage of the Switch's different form factors. Um, and, you know, it is definitely a tried and true fun game uh, and one that will take advantage of the hardware uh, with with a lot of excellence. But for we me, this... Go ahead. I was just say, for me, this might even be, like, moved up to 2 or 1 for most uh, wanted games just because of that tabletop mode. Like, as soon as the initial Switch video came out, I that was the most exciting part of it for me is that tabletop mode with the using the Joy-Cons horizontally. Um, so, yeah, like, not having Mario Kart 8... Um, or having Mario Kart even, I would want more games like Smash Bros. And even if it is a port and they just throw in a couple new characters and a couple new stages, like, I'm totally fine with that because it's, you know, the, the, between iterations, there's not a huge jump, um, except, like, maybe graphically. Um, so just having that available to play when you're in the backseat of a car or on an airplane or out at the park, it would be super cool to me. We still think it fully exists, right? Just because it wasn't oh, mentioned yeah. at all doesn't mean that... I think it's something saved for a direct uh, or mention. You know, it, it really seems like their concern and desire is to keep a a sizable or major release every month. Um, and so I think that is why you're seeing this spread out. And so I fully expect, you know, we get you know Mario Kart 8 in April. May maybe sees the release of, of Splatoon. Um, you know, June, maybe we get the Smash Brothers thing. Uh, and then, you know, so on and so forth up until October, November, December. Um, where we will get Super Mario Odyssey, probably this Ubisoft game, uh, and maybe one of these top two. Number two is whatever the heck Donkey Kong Country uh, is going to do on Switch, completely absent from the, the show, the presentation. Um, you know, Retro is obviously making a game. It's probably not Metroid. Some people say it's probably not Donkey Kong. So when will the awesome ape rear his head? We were just looking at sales numbers and saw that Donkey Kong Country Returns uh, sold really well. Tropical Freeze, not as much, uh, but it still is a, a tentpole franchise for Nintendo, and we we had many discussions before the presentation about, you know, what we wanted to see out of a new DK, so whether this is a, a side-scrolling downloadable, whether this is a big, bold 3D open world, uh, or whether it is a, a Diddy Kong Racing, um, I'm, I'm super excited and hopeful that we see more uh, from the DK crew at E3. Unfortunately, I, I don't think that we see this year at all, um, even for okay. our number one. I don't think that they're this year whatsoever. Um, I, I'd love to be wrong, obviously, because the Switch needs all the games it can take at this point, um, because it's launching with not a lot. Um, right. So I'd love to be wrong, but I, I don't think it's ready. I don't know who's making it, because... Retro is apparently not doing it. I, Retro has said that they're not doing another Donkey Kong, at least not now. So they have to be doing something though. And you know, as one of Nintendo's favorite developers, you have to imagine that they've got something well underway. Um, and you know, you can't go the the first holiday season of your console with, with just Mario. Or so you, or, or, you know, you would say that you can't just launch a, 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 a console with just Zelda, but you know, it's happening. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I do think there's also a spacing of the Nintendo titles in order to create um, some sort of some sort of space for uh, third party to come in. So maybe we do see more of that. Uh, they did mention, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this or I, I texted it to you, but they did mention that there will be more game announcements in the coming weeks. Yeah. So, you know, it looks like it's going to be a steady flow rather than uh, a deluge from the start. So hopefully we get directs and we get announcements and we get the third party support that we were hoping for. Um, third party is not where our number one is though. Number one is Metroid Switch. Uh, like I mentioned, Reggie said, Metroid basically is coming. He said, come back ne this time next year and ask me about Metroid. And he said it in a way that wasn't like, oh, let's talk about it next year, but like, see if we haven't shown it or said something about it by that time. So I, it's been wanted for so long, never really came to fruition on Wii U. I have to imagine that's their big their big hit at so, E3 so, with with Super Mario Odyssey. My thing then becomes who's making it if it's not Retro and it's not Team Ninja. I mean Team Ninja did other M, so that's the only reason I even mentioned them. So like, who's doing this? Does it matter? Sort of. <laughs> I mean, I, I think if I think the, the the more critical 
point is just getting it, right? I mean, were people really even happy with Teen Ninja's efforts? Slightly. Not so you, you liked slightly. it. Slightly. I liked it. Uh, you know, people were very happy with Retro, so, you know, I, 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 I take the, the comments from Retro with a grain of salt, you know, the, the... Oh, you think they could just be lying and they're fully working on Metroid? I mean, how and long did Rocksteady... <laughs> <laughs> They're How doing bugs. <laughs> it's, it's Metroid Kong. Uh, DK's under the helmet. Um, how many times did Rocksteady say they wanted to do something different and they've done Batman exclusively, right? Yeah, you know, so like very, very true. What they say, what they're allowed to say, you know, what their you know Twitter comments are. I don't know how much clout that holds, but of all these games, of all the franchises, Metroid is the the longest requested and the longest missing so I have to imagine <laughs> I hope it comes out and people buy it <laughs> I, I think you know unless, unless you're convinced that Federation Force is your Metroid of the decade <laughs> then uh, you gotta imagine this one's coming soon Jake, um, but you, I, Jake you gotta infiltrate Nintendo and figure this out for us man find out guys, who's developing maybe wear a helmet so that I think you're Samus okay do you guys want a Metroidvania or like a Metroid Prime type like I, would or two Prime. I would love a, a Metroidvania I would fully love a a 3D title. I, I think they need I think they need a unique shooter. I think side scroller is gonna just feel like you know steam fluff to most people. Uh, and so I, I think a, a tell that to Action Verge. Tell that to Action Verge. I'll tell it to them because I don't think they sold anywhere near enough copies that Nintendo will want Metroid to sell. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's not solid. I mean, I, I think if you want to make this a big deal. And there's there's no way at E3 you come out with Metroid and it's like a, t a 2D downloadable. I mean, no, maybe. of course not. No, I don't think it'll be a Metroidvania. I said I would like for it to be. A, oh, no, okay. no. There's How no about a 3D Metroidvania? Yeah, that works too. There we go. Okay, so I, that's our list. Uh, top five most wanted unannounced Switch games. Luigi's Mansion at number five. Number four is Ubisoft's Project Smash Bros. at three. DK at two. Metroid at one. Let's open the floor for a little bit of honorable mention. Uh, uh, cheers before we get out of here. Jake, hit us with one. All right, I got one that's going to hit you off guard, possibly. Um, so I was just reading, and Platonic is releasing Ukulele on April 11th for Xbox One, PlayStation, PC, Mac, and Linux. But they were going to try to release it on the Wii U, but that has broken down. And now they say that they want to port it to Switch. Um, and I think that if they could do that, granted it'll be you know a later uh, release than the April 11th date for everything else, but I think that Ukulele on the Switch would be amazing. Um, I think it fits in very well with Nintendo's you know sort of kid-friendly theme, but also um, being able to play it portably. Like if, if you if I could, from what I've seen of Ukulele, if I could play that on a plane in the tablet mode, like that or even tabletop, like that would be amazing. So I think that that would be something really cool. Would it be like the biggest seller? Probably not, but I think it'd be a cool, unique game that could enhance the Nintendo Switch. Very good. Zach, mention one for us. Uh, I have um, a, a small one as well, which is the third game in the Steam World franchise. Uh, it was not shown off, but it was mentioned on Twitter. Uh, Image Forums Games was saying that their game is well in the works and will be revealed in the coming months. Um, Steam World Dig was excellent. Heist was possibly even better. So whatever project they have, you know, it'll probably be downloadable. Um, who knows? Maybe it is. Maybe they're getting full development power this time. Uh, but nonetheless, like they have hit two, two real home run so i'm excited to see what their third is and i you know wouldn't be surprised if nintendo tried to lock it up with some exclusivity yeah um the other thing like we forget like guardians is coming to switch like they confirm that right uh guardians yeah, of the galaxy telltale yeah yeah so you know maybe there will be more games than than, than we think but um you know pikmin is another one that we you know we all want so i, I mean i i, I I'm super excited for Pikmin, whatever it is, because like the Pikmin 3 multiplayer was fantastic, and if you could play something akin to that on the tabletop mode with a, a buddy right next to you, like I, me and Zach had a blast with that from long distance. So if you could play like you know right next to each other on the couch, like I think it'd be super intense and super fun. Oh yeah, Pikmin 3 single player multiplayer is just an outstanding and, and very underrated game in general. Uh, I think with the haptic rumble, you know, in one two switch they put ice cubes and marbles in your Joy-Con. Now let's put some Pikmin in your Joy-Con. Feel the Pikmin in your hands as you Pikmin uh, launcher. Them, yeah, <laughs> fling them to their their uh destination. Disastrous demise, yeah. Or destination, however you wanna however you wanna do it. But yeah, that is something that is definitely coming and I think we get a, a full E3 reveal. I, I think Pikmin 4 is hundred percent this year. Mm. I don't know. I think that's one to pair with Mario Odyssey. I mean, that game was in development and, and discussed by Miyamoto for, for a number of years already now. Uh, so, you know, Pikmin is a strong 
a strong franchise for them in 2017. They have the sort of revitalized side-scrolling 3DS port, or not port, but new new title. Um, and then I, I bet we get one on the Switch. But yeah, there's a lot to look forward to, a lot of exciting stuff. And in some ways, the lack of... Uh, full exposure is cool because now we'll get more presentations more reveals uh, and more info peppered throughout the coming months and we will keep you up to date with all of it let us know your most anticipated unannounced or unreleased switch games in the comments down below what do you think of our list and let's compare it to yours until we do that though everyone thanks so much for watching for myself gabe and jake switch force out <laughs>